Hello and welcome to this Alent Pro tutorial. My name is Brandon and today I'll be showing you the process of running your design entries and linting within Alent Pro. This will include going through the individual phases of the design analysis flow within Alent Pro and I'll also show you the different properties and settings to help configure this process for your own designs. So with that, let's go ahead and get started now. We'll first begin by opening our Blackjack Mixed Example project within Alent Pro. Once opened, we can begin our design analysis flow by clicking on the Run Project button here within the Flow Manager. Once initiated, the tool will begin going through the five phases of the design analysis flow as shown here. Uh, we'll first go through the parsing phase and then elaboration. Uh, synthesization is next, followed by constraints, and we'll then finish up with linting. All these phases get ran sequentially, as we just saw, and once finished, a number of our windows within the tool will have now been updated as a result. So that's all there is to running the design analysis flow. Let's now, go, let's now go back and go through the individual phases and see how each can be configured. We'll first look at the parse phase. It is here that the syntax of the source code is analyzed. To configure the properties of this phase and all other phases of the design analysis flow, uh, we can go to the global preferences by going to tools, preferences. Additionally, these settings can be configured for a single project by right-clicking on a project and selecting Properties. In either case, we can see all the available options for the parse phase. For Verilog and System Verilog, we're able to specify the version of either HDL that we happen to be using. Additionally, we have a number of options here relating to uh, Verilog and System Verilog included directories, uh, reference libraries, as well as defined macros. So if you need any of those for your design, you can include them all here. In the case of VHDL, we are able to also specify the uh, version used as well as the same preprocessor uh, pre Pragma options uh, that were also available for those other HDL settings. The next phase is elaboration, and it is during this phase that the design hierarchy tree is built and where the top level unit is selected. When this phase is completed, the elaboration viewer here gets updated. And within this window, we can see uh, that design hierarchy. The options available for this phase are once again located within the preferences and settings windows. Uh, for elaboration, we are able to specify the generics as well as manually specify the top level unit. Of course, we can specify the top level unit within the library viewer as well, which is done by finding the module there, uh, right clicking on it, and selecting top level, like so. Uh, while you have the option to manually set top level, it is often not needed. Uh, this is because Alien Pro can automatically detect the top level unit for a given project. Uh, this is done by figuring out which is not instantiated within the design. The third stage is synthesize, and it is here that our design netlist will be generated. Once this phase is completed, we can view the RTL schematic of a given module by right clicking on it within the elaboration viewer or library viewer and selecting the option, like so. From this view, we can see the design at the RTL level and even navigate through the individual components, like so. The options for this phase can once again be found in our properties window. Here, we can see the option to extract enable controls, a setting that might be useful for your FPGA designs. Additionally, we can set the description styles here, which allow you to set a unit to be behavioral in the case that it is not to be synthesized. Uh, this option is also available from the Libraries viewer by right-clicking on the module and setting the description style, like so. And let's now quickly go through the constraints phase. It is during this phase uh, that the design constraints to the project are applied and that advanced netless analysis is performed. Uh, this includes things such as automatic detection of design clocks and reset signals, uh, clock domains partitioning, clock domain crossing, and more. After this phase is completed, you can view the constrained clocks via the clocks and resets viewer, uh, accessible by going to view netless windows and selecting the view like so. Additionally, there is also an option to show the same information in a schematic form uh, by clicking control schematics here. From both of these views, we can see our clocks and uh, reset information. Now the final phase is linting, 
which serves to check your HDL code using specified design requirements. The violation viewer is the window that gets updated after this phase, and it is here that all of the violations within your code will be shown. There's a number of ways to present these violations uh, using the options here. We can show by hierarchy, show by classification, show by rule name or rule level, and also show by severity. In any case, we can use this view to see which violations pertain to our HDL code, as well as get an explanation and possible solution to that violation uh, by right-clicking on a violation and, sele and selecting show rule description, like so. If available, this window will provide more information on that particular violation. To change what violations get shown and not shown, we can change the policy settings used for linting. Uh, this is accessed by once again going to the preferences window. Under linting, we can see all of the policies that are applied for this particular design. And of course, we are able to enable or disable any that you see fit. And that'll be it on this introduction to running your design entries and linting within ALINT Pro. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you, and of course, thanks for watching.